What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nasantoski here of Mason Brew. And Devontae Jones commits to Michigan. The star Coastal Carolina point guard transfers to the Wolverines. He chose Michigan over finalist Texas, Texas Tech, and Memphis. Sun Belt Player of the Year in 2020 with NBA aspirations. He did enter his name into the draft without an agent, so he has two years of eligibility remaining. Very likely he does end up in Ann Arbor for this upcoming season. Michigan adding an experienced point guard to replace the departing Mike Smith. This will provide veteran leadership in the very same way that Mike Smith did. So let's do the following in this video. Go through some film. Why did he choose Michigan? Go through some stats and then look at the depth chart. All right, so starting right here, shout out to Frankie Vision for the highlights here, but his defense, Devontae Jones' defense, really, really stands out here. He has solid anticipation, really good breaks on the ball. He he got 2.8 steals per game in 2020. That's just an astounding figure. That's good for number three in the country last year overall in the entire country. So 2.8 steals per game, and you can see here that he's able to finish at a pretty high clip on these, right? So not only can he get the steal, but he's able to capitalize on the other end. He has really good body control, good patience uh, when he's finishing in transition here. And right there, good use of the body. He's able to absorb contact. Again, he's 6'1", 200 pounds, so he has a really good frame. And, you know, I wouldn't say like tip-top athleticism, but he's able to finish through contact, right? He's very adept around the basket using some fakes uh, and just using his body well. He's not only looking to score, though. He can distribute in transition off of a steal here. You can see both these instances, other players had a better opportunity he delivered. All right, so kind of leading into that, in transition, same sort of deal, right? Right there, boom, good spin move. Uh, he's a true coast-to-coast -coast guy. Saw that in the first clip here on this other one. Again, through contact, able to finish, and it, it looks like he's finishing with ease, right? He's not out of control. He's able to stay contained, good acceleration to the basket, picks up the and one there. Here, teammate gets the tip, able again with the little step through and the underarm finger roll. You'll see that a lot. Here again, little step through, finish with the left. So we can finish on both sides here. Last play, love that distribution of the ball down the court. And let's look next here at this section of his drives to the basket. So now we're in the half court. He has a little floater that you can hit with some consistency here. These first three are some floaters. He has a guy in front of them uh, setting for a charge of this last one specifically. Lots of contact there from 24, able to finish over him there. Um, but like I said, his drive and underhand layup is his bread and butter, uh, especially in the pick and roll here. He's able to take advantage of guys anticipating that pick and just blow by uh, in those situations. And, um, you know, he, he has the ability to also move without the ball. So there he picks up the end one. But, you know, we saw plenty of him making his own shot on his drive. But he can drive the baseline you saw right there. Uh, here, a little backdoor cut. Nice pass, able to finish down low, and just a lot of different plethora of ways he can score. Here, the last two, he averaged something like 7.2 rebounds this past season. Definite strength of his. Okay, here we are, point guard, distribution important, right? Not the most, I wouldn't say it's his best ability here, right? He's able to drive really well. That will open up a lot of distribution ability for him. But um, he, he didn't have that many last year. Only three assists per game. We'll go over the stats later. But an area to improve, an area he'll have to definitely lean on a, a lot more than he did while at Coastal Carolina. But you can see him in 22 had a really good rapport last season in that regard. Okay, finally, shooting. Not the fastest release, but really solid. And he has a great step back. You can see right here. Wow right? That is a really solid step back. That'll get him plenty of baskets. He hit 37% excuse me, from three-point land last year, which is great. 48% from two, obviously a lot of work in the paint. So he is a threat from deep, right? 37% was definitely his highest compared to his previous two seasons, but teams will have to, have to respect him behind the arc. And he has range, right? Like right here, boom, a couple feet behind the arc, able to nail that one, NBA range. So he's not just a guy who, who uh, you know, is right on the line. He can shoot it from deep and teams really have to close out hard. Combine that with his driving ability and that will open him up a ton for offense. Um, and he, he can shoot the three from all over the, the court, right? We saw it from the top of the key on the wing, from the corner as well here, a little mid-range. Not, not his best shot, his mid-range didn't see a whole lot of that, but 
he can shoot and he can shoot extremely well. So why Michigan, right? Why did he choose Michigan? He said he watched film of all the schools that was interested in him. The system fit his play the best. He said the fan base stood out, right? So shout out to all the fans for the raids after the game. Maybe they had an impact. You know, it's not going to be the deciding factor, but clearly he mentioned it. So it has some sort of impact. He personally spoke with Mike Smith. Mike Smith said great things. Obviously a great ambassador, a guy who is in a very similar situation as Devontae Jones before coming to Ann Arbor. So that's a thing he had in his corner. And then he talked with Howard, talked with Isley, Washington, Martelli. He talked to the entire coaching staff, got a really good picture of what it would look like his time on the team. He said that he was picking Howard's brain on a Zoom call. And Howard was picking his brain on, on how, how they would actually work together uh, if he were to come to Ann Arbor. And then finally, he said that Howard wanted him to come in and help the freshman guys and be a leader right away, right? Michigan does, does have the number one recruiting class coming in. Got to teach up those young guys, right? Having a really veteran presence in Jones is great. Okay, now let's look at the stats here. I'll pull up the stats for Devontae Jones, go over that, and then we'll compare to Mike Smith here. So what stands out? for Devontae Jones. Field goal percentage is legit, right? You look year over year uh, in the upper 40%. That is awesome. A little bit of fluctuation with three, with this three-point shot, right? Like I said before, maybe expect in the mid 30% could be the expectation there, but planning to keep the defenses honest, right? And because he doesn't have to be the primary scorer every single game like he was at Coastal Carolina, he should have plenty of opportunity to up that percentage even further. Free throw shooting, always indicative of the overall shooting ability of a player. 86%, extremely good, right? That's extremely high. Third in the country with 2.8 steals. I mentioned that before. So obviously his defensive presence will be a welcome sight to Ann Arbor. And he did that a lot without following, right? Only 2.3 per game, which is really impressive, okay? And I'll throw up Mike Smith's stats on the board as well. Remember this last year for Mike Smith was in Ann Arbor, but you can see pretty comparable stats. Jones didn't have to... Uh, be relied on quite as heavily as Mike Smith did at Columbia. But similar shooting percentage, Devontae Jones actually a little bit higher and he'll bring a higher floor at defense. Mike Smith turned into a really good defender, but it's a true differentiator for uh, Devontae Jones. Okay, looking at the depth chart here. So you got Devontae Jones, Zeb Jackson, Frankie Collins at the point guard spot, shooting guard, Eli Brooks and Kobe Bufkin, right? So things are a bit crowded at both the one and two position with Brooks coming back. Shooting guard position is firmly held there, okay? So Jones is definitely, I think, going to lock down the starting role. Now, I never want to count out Zeb Jackson. This is the year we could really see him step forward. And people love both Collins and Bufkin, right? But it's, it's hard to find time uh, for Collins if Jackson does step up, right? A third string point guard, maybe get some spot time, but not a whole lot. I think Bufkin has a bit clearer time as a backup two and even some time at the three since the three is pretty uh, empty with just Caleb Houston there and Franz Wagner expected to depart. So Devontae Jones, good to start right away. I'm really excited to see him come in, provide that veteran leadership, and he seems like a great player, right? He's going to be dynamite. He's going to have a really good chance to uh, put in some big minutes and really lead the freshman to uh, which should be a great season next year as well. So let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments below. Throw a like and subscription if you do like this video. Otherwise, guys, appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Stay safe out there, and as always, go blue.